Wish me luck! Ow. I gotta say, for a 5.9, this thing is very quiet. What is up, Geeks 4x4? Today, we are gonna start working on a new project. It's a 1989 Wagoneer with a 5.9 in it. Grand Wagoneer, excuse me. And uh, we are gonna see if we can get it running today. Don't forget to subscribe to continue watching this build, and don't forget to like this video. It, all your love helps us, the channel. Let's get started. All right, so I grabbed a new battery, and uh, we're going to touch power to it for the first time in 20 years, and we'll see what happens here. I hear something running. So it sounds like we've got a uh, door sensor or something running on the inside. I was going to play with it a little bit more, but I figured I'd just I'd put power to it. I'm going to see if this thing will turn over. Let's see if we can get you guys in there see the motor turning. Well, I think you saw in the camera, the motor did turn, and uh, now I'm going to new, the brand new Duralast does not quite have enough oomph to uh, turn it. Shows 12.4 volts though. My little fancy thing, I haven't used this yet. So let's see if this does anything. Well, starter is not happy with me uh, trying to bump it, so, but I do have turn, which is good, and so now I think I'm going to pull a couple spark plugs and see if I can't get it to spin easier. Just rolled down the power window on the driver door, works just fine, so, uh, pretty cool. There's the first spark plug to come out of there, not too shabby looking. I'm going to dump just a little bit of... Marvel's mystery oil in every cylinder as I pull out the plugs. As I can get to them, they are, like I said, they are really hard to get to. Pop that off. You don't have to listen to the yelling anymore. These spark plug wires are shot, so I'm going to see if I can't rip them off. Yeah. Will not pull off. So, so I'm pulling these plugs. Uh, I've got new plugs coming. I've got new wires coming. Got a new cap and rotor coming. Uh, these are just things that I know are really bad. The wires are chewed through. Uh, I guess there was a possum living under the hood at one point, and uh, he decided to chew through some things. Now the cool thing is, yeah, there was a possum living under the hood, but. I really haven't seen much damage to the wiring um, from Mr. Possum. As you can see, as you can see, or as I'll show you at some point, there is some definite rubber hose chewing. But uh, as far as um, wiring goes, it's not that bad. Plug number two. Top of these plugs is obviously destroyed. I don't even know if they get enough contact to spark anymore. Doesn't matter, the wires are shot, so. so that last try, it sounds like the uh, starter isn't happy anymore. I'm going to go down there and see if I can't turn it by hand. Well, no turning it on the crank either, but it's interesting because I, I thought that it had uh, turned over the first time I hit the starter, so I am uh, very curious as to what's going on here. Got two spark plugs out. Uh, I would love to get another one out, at least some more on the other side, and see if I can't uh, 
put some more marble in there and let her sit. Spark plug number three. Here is the fourth plug. And we'll throw some marble down in there. Alrighty, got four cylinders open now. I am going to attempt one more time with the jumper set in there. See if I can't get this thing to spin. And there she spins. I even remembered to record and I was still recording when I played with it. Well, I now have the uh, key out of the ignition and the ignition's still on. I'm going to need to figure out an ignition. Um, it is now stuck in the on position. So I'm going to have to figure that out as well. Hit the hazards uh, and surprisingly almost all of them work. Well alrighty for today we uh, just about done. I'm going to throw those spark plugs back in but I'm just really happy that this motor's turning. Uh, I was afraid that it wasn't going to turn so now I got a happy starter and a Happy motor. So now I'm gonna, uh, like I said, I ordered some parts. I've got uh, spark plug wires, spark plugs, cap and rotor, and that's gonna be what we put on there first to see if we can't get this thing started. So uh, as I said before, these wires are, I mean, some of them are just here. So it'll be interesting. I'm gonna have to uh, learn the pattern of the wires and on the distributor and everything like that. Uh, I'll have to look all that up and then put them all together. So, fingers crossed this thing uh, starts here in the next section of this video. So the ignition is stuck on, as I said. I was going to see if the back window doesn't go up and down. It does. It needs some grease, but it does work. And I tried every other window in the car. Uh, every other window works just fine. The uh, power, they're all power windows. I've not played with the lights. The radio works. The AC fan works. Uh, so far, everything I've tried is working. So uh, that's a good start. I will take it. Well, all right. So you saw in the last portion of this video, I finally got it spinning. Yeah, it's been a couple days. Like I said, I ordered some parts. Got all my parts and my tools. Like I said, I got this on the street. So I'm trying to make as less little trip back and forth as possible. Got a radiator cap. I got everything from uh, Rock Auto this time. They have the best deals on this, this kind of stuff that you know um, can fit the car without, uh, you know, being super specific. So uh, anyway, I got uh, new wires, new distributor, cap and rotor, and new plugs, and ICs. I'm going to put and ICs on all the plugs, and I have my spark plug gap tool. And I'm going to see if I can't figure out uh, what the gap's supposed to be on this motor. And I just like to double check spark plug, plug gap because uh, even though they say they're pre gap when they come, I've had them to be very off. So let's see, it actually might be right here. It's 
spark plug gap, 0.35. So that's pretty uh, pretty nice to have that right there on the uh, in the motor department. So anyway, I'm gonna start doing plugs here. Do a little a uh, little dab of anti seize on them. Check the gap on that already. It's at 0.35, so it is going in. flexible head to do these spark plugs. I got it. That is the back one on the passenger side. It's so tight in there. You have to put, you have to actually do it with a wrench on the uh, socket and then with your fingers to get it out. That's tight. I don't even, it's gonna be hard to get a new one in there. Number seven. Number eight. Boom. Change the spark plugs, man. Uh, they are not in good shape, the ones that came out. And we've got a couple of auto lights, we've got a box. Uh, I will have to say though, the Bosch looks the newest, and even if it has been in there for 20 years, this tip is better than the rest of them, which is quite surprising. Uh, so anyway, on to uh, distributor to the cap and rotor. So, so I like to put uh, dielectrical grease on the ends, inside the ends of the new spark plug wires so that they got a nice connection as they, uh, they go on. Never hurts to do it. Ow. As you're watching, uh, they don't really like coming out of the distributor once they go in these AC Delco wires. I keep pulling these end clips off of them, which is not great, uh, but they're able to just be crimped back on and it's no problem. But uh, just something I wanted to mention for you guys looking uh, at buying them. I figured just in case on the odd, odd chance it starts, I should be filming to see what comes out of the exhaust pipe. Checking out. All right, I'm ready. I can't say I'm surprised, uh, but uh, I definitely, I'm gonna go grab uh, some fuel, dump some fuel down. I don't even know if I have a spark yet or anything. So it didn't sound like it had had spark, but I'm gonna pop open the carburetor and put a nice healthy dose of starter flow down. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna say have spark, boys. Oh, she 
she's trying. She's a trying. There you go, first little start. Okay, so what is smoking in here is this right here. Uh, you wagon here guys, I'd love to know what it is. I am pretty sure that this is gonna need a, I might just buy a new carburetor, I'm not really sure um, what I wanna do with the carb, but uh, BJ's Off-Road over on the west side actually sells a full ready carburetor. I don't know if it has, I'm pretty sure that the um, idle air control is what's going, is what's not doing its job. Uh, it's not trying to idle it up or anything. As you can hear, it's just barely running. So, uh, I don't have any water in it either. I don't want to run it for too long like that, but uh, it does run. So, that's pretty exciting, if you ask me. Let me also say in that running, that is the first start in close to 20 years, 18 years of this thing. So, uh, you know, if it does a little bit of fire, that's okay. Alrighty, so you guys heard uh, how it is running in this video already. I said that I'm going to look at the carburetor, and I definitely am going to, but I started thinking about it last night, and I wanted to point out that the vacuum lines could really be causing that on a... A, on a vehicle of this era, um, the vacuum setups on these ran a lot of things that they shouldn't have, and so uh, you just have to. My cord is. There we go. Maybe that's not in your shot anymore. Um, anyway, the vacuum lines ran a lot of things they shouldn't have to. It actually has a vacuum advance on the distributor, and. Um, like I said, something lived in this engine compartment, so guess what? The vacuum lines are another thing that that animal can shoot up. So today I got zip ties to go through and clean some of those up. Um, and I've got a bunch of rubber tubes, so we're going to see if I can't uh, get some of these vacuum lines capped off and or plugged in. I'll put it this way. This, I think you guys can see this in the camera is from the distributor. It's not attached to anything. So uh, definitely not helping my cause. The other thing on vacuum line is a lot of times you'll see the ends are pretty destroyed like this. If you still have pliability in the rubber, uh, a lot of times you can cut that end off and get a fresher end and actually get a good connection with your vacuum line. All right, update. I've got uh, put Startron in 
the gas tank and about a gallon and a half of good fuel. Connected some of the vacuum lines that were just out and about. And I'm pumping trying to get the new gas up to the gas the carburetor. store and get a coolant hose and uh, we might try and take this thing around the block.
drive nine, this thing is very quiet. So I'm gonna go do another lap. Wish me luck! And that is it for the original radiator. You guys can see it here, this is very entertaining. It's only at about 220, so uh, Technically not running hot, but that radiator just, all these holes in it, just rusted right on through as I got some water in it. So, puking over here, puking over there, puking out in the front, all the puke. And as you can see, our little uh, nest home is still burning down there. Slowly but surely, we are burning that off. Uh, as you see, I'm pulling the coil wire to disconnect it. The ignition does not go back. It's stuck on accelerator. I have a new ignition cylinder coming. Um, and obviously it needs that. Well, alrighty. It's running, folks. Lots more work to do, as you can tell. When I put it in gear, it likes to die. It does okay driving around. Uh, it doesn't quite die when you come to it. Like the Dodge did, um, but uh, it definitely has got a lot of action lines that need to be fixed and or plugged and or who knows what. Uh, but the vacuum lines are going to be the the big project here. Cool deal is now I can actually get it in the garage and uh, not have to work on it out on the street, which I am looking forward to. So I feel bad having it parked out on the street. So it can now move on its own. Just wanted to come in and say thanks for watching today. I know that was a longer video, but we appreciate your support. Thank you to all the recent subscribers. Your support has just been amazing. Uh, just continue to subscribe to the channel. Continue to like those videos. Don't forget, merchandise, when you want to support us, is right down below. Thank you for watching today. We will see you next time.